So this is a walkthrough of the second example uh, in which we're going to look at the uh, creating Vanier functions to describe both the valence and the lower conduction states in silicon. OK, so I'm logged onto the computer. Um, I'd ran exercise one in uh, EX1 folder. You might have it called something different. Um, and I'm simply going to clone that across. So I'm going to copy uh, minus R EX1 to a folder called EX2, for example, two. And we'll go into example two. Right, I've got my files there. Um, I've already run the SCF calculation. I've got the ground state already. No need to rerun that. Um, what I need to do is um, I'll need to do the, uh, the non-self-consistent calculation um, on, I'll keep with the 4 by 4 by 4 set of K points I used in the first example, but I'm going to need to change the, the number of bands because uh, in the first example, I only had four bands for the, for the valence states. So let me just look at the, the notes. Okay, so um, all we need to do then is uh, I'm going to edit 05.nfcf and here I'd set n band 4. We're going to run that for 12. Okay, so pw.x pipe in the input, put that into nfcf.out. Okay, it will be a little bit slower because it's obviously computing more eigenvalues, so I may cut this for time. Okay, that's ran. A uh, quick look here just at the um, top files. Yep, looks like everything has run okay. I should look at the NSCF file just to check it completed, but it all looks fine. Um, so I'm going to need to create the Vanier input files. So why don't I copy my previous input file, ex1.win, to ex2.win? And let's have a go at editing this. Okay, so um, numbands is 12 in my calculation. Okay. Um, now, I want Vanier functions to describe the, uh, the four valence and the lower conduction bands. So one way of doing that is to use, um, rather than atom bond-centered projectors, to use atom-centered projections. I could use, um, say, S and P orbitals, because that's going to describe the character of those, those low-lying states. However, um, you could use just S and P. But what we, tend, what we will find is that actually they would f form a lower spread by hybridizing and becoming sp3 orbitals. So I can uh, simply put an sp3 orbital on each um, silicon atom, two silicon atoms, four sp3 orbitals. So that's eight Vanier functions I'm going to have in total. So I will change my num van to be eight. So I need to extract out from my 12 bands um, a space that contains eight Vanier functions. So um, I'm going to need to do two things. I will want to have a region, um, a frozen region, where I'm going to say, please exactly describe those states. And I'm also going to have to have an outer window where I decide um, which states I'm allowed to mix together in order to form my eight Vanier function. So if we go back and have a look at the band structure we calculated earlier, here, I'll just pop that down onto the screen. OK. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'd like to exactly describe the valence bands. OK, so I'm going to say my frozen window is going to go from here all the way down to the bottom. Now, I only need to describe by default it will pick, if any 90 will pick, a, um, if I put a, win, a frozen window in uh, and just specify the top, it will automatically put the bottom to be the lowest energy of state. So I just need to give an energy, upper energy window that's somewhere in this gap here. Now, we have to remember that we've referenced everything to zero. Um, in the original calculation, that was actually the top of the, we, we set here, the top of the valence band, which was about 6.4. Okay, so um, I need to give Vanier 90 the, the original energies, not the ones that I've shifted around. So let me see, I if I put this, froze the top of the window, and I'll set that equal to 6.4. OK, and the units will be EV. Now, setting the, as discussed in the notes, setting the, uh, the top of the outer window. So what we're going to do is we're going to extract out amongst all of these states some linear combination of them that essentially has the sort of optimal SP3 character. So I need to be a little bit careful. I mean, I could set the window right at the top. Um, that might hybridize in some extra 
character, make them a bit more localized. Um, if I put it too low, then I'm in danger that I, I'm, I'm trying to extract eight states from seven and that would, wouldn't work. So um, you can play around with this and it does make a, a little bit of a difference to um, uh, the, the sort of quality of the interpolated band structure and various things. I, looking at this, I think I'd like to be able to maybe count this state here at this high symmetry point. So I'm going to put my outer window to be somewhere in this little gap between here and here. Okay, you can play around with that and see what effect it has. Um, so adding on the, the, the shift, so remembering that zero is, is about 6.4, um, I'm going to put this to be about, I'm going to put it here, which is about 17 EV. Okay, so let me get my band structure out of the way and um, I will set the top of the outer window. Um, this win max, this win max, I'll set that equal to, to 17. Okay. What else should I do? Um, I'm not doing a restart, so let's uncomment that. Um, I can leave the Vanier plot in. Why don't I do the bands plot as well? But um, I've got some extra K points here that I didn't use in my PW calculation, so I'll just uh, I'll just comment those out for the moment. Okay. And that is, I think, everything I want to do to the um, to the wind file. Okay. Now, if I go to ex uh, the input to PW to Vanier 90, this is exactly the same. Um, I just need to change the seed name here to match my win file. So this changes to ex2. I'm going to write the A files, the M matrix, and the block states, the UNK. So that all looks good. So um, now the first thing I need to do is generate the new NNKP file. So to do that, I call Vanier 90 with a minus PP option and the seed name, which is ex2. And this is where I hope I got everything right. Yep, that all looks good. So there's now a, a file called ex2.nnkp. And that's very similar to the ex1 that you had earlier. So the number of k points and the lattice is all the same. But you see now I've got eight projections, OK, because it's going to look for, for eight Vanier functions. So that's that's all good. OK, so now I'm run, ready to run pw to Vanier 90. So pw to Vanier 90, pipe in 06, put this into pwvan.out. And again, that just may take a few moments, so I may trim this. OK, hopefully everything ran OK. All my files are there. So uh, you're right, I can go ahead and run Vanier 90. So exactly as before, but without the, um, the minus PP option. OK. And I'm plotting the wave functions here, the Vanier functions, so they will take a little, this calculation takes a little bit longer than normal. Most of it is taken in reading in those UNK files and producing the XSF files. OK, so we have we have uh, we have finished. That's good. Um, let me actually let's start by having a look at the band structure. Why not? OK, so we we'll use new plot and um, I'm going to use this command the series of uh, setup parameters, which you could have stored in a script or something. They, they were uh, given to you in the first example. OK, and then um, I'm going to plot the QE bands that I got again in the first example, the full plane wave ones versus my new ones. Um, again, I'm going to plot the uh, the Vanier ones using points every five data points uh, with a little cross. And let's see what that looks like. Interesting error message is uh, from new plot or due to the X terminal. It's a little bit slow displaying remotely here. Let's give it a time to, to refresh. OK. It's not done a good job of putting band labels on for me, but that's not desperately important here. So what do we see? Um, so within the frozen window, so from here downwards, remember this is just a four by four by uh, grid. It's actually done a re reasonably good job. Interestingly, it's a slightly better job than the, uh, the valence only ones. OK, so it's quite a good description. There's some discrepancies about here and around about here. Um, that might be improved. That would be improved indeed if you used a 6 by 6 by 6 or an 8 by 8 by 8 mesh, but that would be a slightly longer calculation. Um, and it's actually done a not too bad job at describing the, the lower conduction band, remembering that we didn't enforce 
uh, these states to be exactly reproduced, it could just hybridize these uh, original block states together in order to form the most localized set of, of, of Vanier functions. So for example, we put the outer window to be up here. So this state, um, it's sort of a 16 and a bit was, was included, um, but it's chosen instead rather than to, to match that state, it's chosen to pick, pick this one here. Um, it's made some options around here. There's some deviation uh, around here, but again, remember that's probably because what it's tried to do is hybridize in some character from the from the states up here. But the exercise wasn't to produce a perfect match to the bands in this state. If it was, we uh, would have used a frozen window that would have been that covered the area that we were interested in. Um, like if we wanted four or five EV above, we'd uh, put the window to be higher up. Although we in that case, we would probably find that we'd need a slightly larger set of Vanier functions to just correctly describe all the symmetries we had. So that band structure is pretty good. Okay, that's that's not bad for a for a four by four by four sampling. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Quick new plot. Right, let's have a look at the the actual output file because there is something. Although that's a perfectly good type binding Hamiltonian that we, that we've obtained, there is actually a bit of a catch. Something interesting. So um, what have we got in the output? Standard stuff, uh, reproducing the, the 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 cell and the atoms. Here are the projections we used. Uh, K point grid, all the parameters, B vectors. That was all very similar to the last case. Now we're doing a disentanglement, so it's telling us about the windows that we've used, which states are frozen. Remember, this is slightly higher I print than uh, uh, verbosity than we would normally use. So the first. So now, uh, unlike the, the case of the valence bands, we're doing a disentanglement first, so an extraction of this optimally connected subspace. Um, and you can see that this is a iterative minimization. This part, uh, the gauge invariant spread is being minimized. Um, and after about 80 steps, we've reached our convergence criteria and we, and we stop, okay. Um, and now we are minimizing the spreads. Okay, so this is the same vanierization that we had before, but with eight vanier functions. So after 100, okay, here's our final state. And um, because we did the plotting, it tells us the real to imaginary parts. So they're actually uh, really very real. Okay, that's good. Now, eight vanier functions, um, they split into two sets. So these ones here are obviously a set of SP3. Well, perhaps only obvious if you visualize them, but they're obviously linked around um, the atom at the origin. Okay, so the, if you think of the coordinates, they'll be arranged as a tetrahedra around uh, that central atom. And if you, that's the same that's true for these, it's a little more complicated because you've got to take periodic boundary conditions into effect, but that's the same that's going on up, up here. Um, but these two things have got different spreads. Well, hang on, that's a bit weird because wouldn't we think that we, that the, the all the Vanier functions should be sort of symmetry related to each other? Well, let's have a look at them. So I'm going to pick one from the first set. So that's um, the one with the lower spread. Okay, that's say Vanier function two. And then I'll look at Vanier function eight that has the higher spread. What is the difference between these two Vanier functions? Okay, so I need to call up Vesta and I'd already opened the file. So here we go. So this is uh, Vanier function two. This is the one with the lower spread. And it's definitely got some SP but it looks like a very classic sp3 hybrid orbital and you notice that there's a major lobe and the minor lobe and the minor lobe is along the bond the major lo uh, minor lobe is along the bond and the major lobe is in the back bonding region but if we look at number eight okay so this is one with a higher spread you can see that the major lobe is in the bonding region and the minor lobe is in the back bonding region so Perhaps it's not entirely surprising that this Vanier function is more localized than this one here. Okay. So these are, if you like, degenerate solutions for the Vanier functions. They're, they're both real Vanier functions. They both give perfectly good interpolation. But if we wanted to be perhaps a little bit more consistent, we could choose the Vanier functions from the initial projection to either be purely with the major lobe along the bonding region or along the back bonding region, okay? Um, and because they're local minima, the, minim the minimizer will go into whichever one we actually start it from, okay? So let's try to put everything along the back bonding 
region because that will give us the most localized Vanier functions. Okay, let's, so what we would need to do here is edit the input file. So let me see, I'm, um, I'm going to not do a plotting because that takes a little bit of time. I'm going to call this one atom one and this one atom two. Oops. Okay, so um, now SP1, sorry, SI1, that was the one that was okay. Okay, that, that, that was the atom that was off the origin. They were the ones where the projection was in the back bonding re region. So, but it's silicon atom two. So if I was to draw SP, put SP3, that's exactly what we had before. Um, but what I need to do though, is I need to do a rotation of the, proje of the projection. So if I went and looked in the, in the manual, you can see what the actual mathematical definitions of the SP3 uh, orbitals are that we use. And if I do a rotation such that the, I kind of in, invert them, uh, uh, that will be a projection um, onto the uh, onto the back bonded ones. So to do that, I think that all I need to specify is to change the coordinate system. So if I put if I do a rotation such that I move x onto y, that will I think be enough. Okay, let's give this a go. So I need to do the calculation again. Now, um, so you know what I what I would need to do is repeat. Uh, the this thing here, uh, I've generated a new NNKP matrix. Now, let me just edit for the sake of speed. Um, I don't, the M matrix is not going to change. The block states are exactly as they were. No, there's no difference at all. So there's no point to recompute that. Um, the block states aren't going to change. So that they take a little bit of time to plot out. All I need to do is rewrite the, uh, the A matrix. So let's do that. And so uh, run that again. Okay, and now let's run Vanier 90. Moment of truth. Okay, everything is very similar. Um, you can make a comparison actually and check that the, uh, the gauge invariant spread is unchanged, which should be the case. But now look from the first iteration, they've all got the lower spread. Okay. So we go through. Um, I probably should have asked you to save the file so you could, uh, could have made a, an easy comparison. But if you uh, compare that against what you got originally, you'll notice now the Vanier functions all have a slightly lower spread. Interesting to compare the band structures, you should find that they're remarkably similar. Okay. So actually, this small change in the spread, which is really uh, dominated by the regions quite close into the atom, uh, hasn't changed the quality of the interpolation, which is more affected by the, by the decay of the Vanier functions.